financial markets, cryptocurrency, gold and silver, world news. Fair to say you simply flooded the system with money. Yes, we did, we did. That's another way to think about it. We did, we did. Where does it come from? Do you just print it? We print it digitally. Digitally. And we do that by buying treasury bills. That actually increases the money supply. Financial turmoil explained. Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show on this Thursday, the 9th of June, 2022. Thank you for tuning in. Glad to have you guys here. Now, what I want to talk about is what they're all missing out there. I know, I understand back when Paul, in the Paul Volcker era, when they raised interest rates up to over 15% to try to quell black inf inflation, it took a high rate of interest. To, and I, I do understand now how, how the rates, we are at historically low rates of interest right now, and how uh, comparing apples to oranges. You know, or they're trying to compare oranges to oranges, and this is like comparing apples to oranges because there is a major thing that they're missing, and it's a credit contraction, a deleveraging of the system, and how fast, how rapidly that can swing inflation into deflation. This is what they're missing right now. Uh... Yes, during the Paul Volcker era, it took 15% or more, but and no, they cannot raise rates that high, and so they're assuming that inflation is going to continue marching on. But what a deleveraging can do, what a meltdown of the system, very similar to what they had in 2008 can do, that kind of contraction, what's the system worth? You do know that at auction and stuff, a lot of times they'll sell companies, they'll sell businesses, they'll sell vehicles that are over leveraged. In other words, they're something like it, maybe they'll have a company, you know, and the co the whole company is, is so far deep in debt, nothing they have is worth anything because it's all, and they'll sell it for one dollar. They'll bid one dollar here, buy it because it's not worth anything any longer. Because it's it's in the red, so deep in the red, it's not wor it's worthless. It's going to cost you more to buy it than it's worth. Well, let's take examine America and examine examine the Federal Reserve and the whole system that they've created of this massive enormous Ponzi scheme right now. They've only got what is it something like I think something like two trillion dollars in actual currency out there, and all the rest is debt. And, and the United States unfunded liabilities is over two hundred trillion dollars. I mean, they're bankrupt. The whole thing's bankrupt. So what should what should you sell it for? Sell it for a buck. <laughs> you know. So there there shows the size of the deleveraging. If the system deleverages, the whole thing freezes. And we go from, I don't know what the inflation rate is right now. I do know it was 8.25% a few weeks ago, but now, who knows? I can't remember what it is. I haven't heard it lately, what the CPI is. But you can go from that, whatever it is, percentage of inflation, to no inflation. In fact, you can bypass disinflation. You can go right into deflation in 24 hours. It's called a meltdown. It's exactly what happened in 2008. They had to leverage the system back up to stop it. Do you remember all those bailouts that they did back in 2008 to try to bail the system out and get it back running again? They, they said they came within two hours of a total meltdown. And it's all got to do with the way what we call money is created. Money being the currency and currency units. They create them, but they don't create what's needed to pay the debt. So if, say, they're, to base it down really simple, let's say a million dollars. Government's going to borrow a million dollars. Yeah, they borrow the million dollars, but now you're going to have to pay the interest on that. Not an interest. It's not an interest-free loan. There's interest on it. But they just lent you the million. Did they, did they create the money to pay the interest? No. They only created the million. But the million now, you've had it for a year, or two years, or five years, or ten years with accruing interest, and say you owe back 1100000 
from that original million. They only created the original million. They didn't create the 100,000 interest that's owed on it. Now, you do this over a couple hundred year period. You have to keep enlarging the debt, but the, the underlying interest to pay off the debt was never created in the first place. And so now if you try to deleverage or try to pay everything off, what happens is you're in deficit. So you can't pay it off because all the thing we everything we call money, this credit these credit union units are all part of the loan. You can't pay the loan off. And so what a deleveraging is, you get one or more or a number of companies or, or banks or whatever start to go under because of what they're doing within the financial system right now of, of basically withdrawing money. That's what quantitative tightening is. And they're going to be drawing $95 billion a month out of the system. That's the new credit needed to pay the debt. So it's a no-brainer. It's almost like a guy is paying his paying his uh, bill he's paying his credit card bills but just barely he's got a job right say there's a guy and say he's in debt uh to the credit card companies and say he's got a job and he's paying off his credit cards but all of a sudden he loses his job right well that's what the fed's doing right now by by doing quantitative tightening is like the system's lost its job it's lost the money that's needed to to keep the renewing the credit and keep uh, keep the system running. They're withdrawing that away. We could get a deleveraging any time now. A credit freeze could actually happen. Caused by what they're doing. And suddenly, nobody has any money. Or is not able to use any money. The system's frozen. They have to unfreeze it with money. And so what's happened is, is suddenly they've lost all of their, all of their CPI. Their, their inflation is gone overnight. It's called a crash of the system. It's called a, a, a deleveraging event. And they're not figuring this in. None of them are. To fight an inflation. It can fight inflation overnight with deflation. <laughs> Suddenly you go from a system that's running to a system that's just froze up. And is suddenly in deflation and deflating. In a matter of hours because it's all an electronic system. Deleveraging, that deleveraging now can occur in a matter of hours once it starts. And we're on the verge of it right now. So we've got to take that into consideration when we start to think about, hey, fighting inflation. Anyway, and they're not. Even though it's staring them right in the face. Start the charts right here. Take a look. Silver price today. And she's going straight down right now. Down 28 cents. It looks like it's really dropping fast right now, right this moment. Uh, let's take a look at gold. Gold is dropping right now. It's down $10.50 at 1842. Uh, cryptocurrency, let me refresh the page. It was 1237 billions, 1239. It's holding Bitcoin price at 30,182. Been holding this price around 30,000 for quite a few days now. Let's take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It says it's up 30 points right now at 32,941. Let's refresh the page. Now it's down 162 points. <laughs> Man, it can move fast. <laughs> that was just like two minutes ago. It was up 30. Now it's down 162 at 32,748. There's your dead cat bounce right here. So market peaked. You know, up here, I think this was one of the big peaks right here, right in here. It was peaking. It was peaking all along here. The market was peaking. It peaked here, you know, it peaked here, 36,799. And then we had a little bit lower peak, 35,700. And then she started to crack, then, then peaked, oh wait, peaked again here. Peaked again, but now here was the, here was when it started to taper off. The market started to taper off, and and this is obvious. We set a number of peaks, and then the market started to go into decline. So here's your decline right here, and this is what's called a dead cat bounce right here. 
because the problem that made the market go into decline is still there. It's called the Fed. And so we're going to go into this decline is going to continue. So that means this is a dead cat bounce right now. You know, and now here's the thing. I think that they are actually going to trigger some sort of a uh, some sort of a credit crisis or a crunch in the system. Uh, it's just a matter of time until somebody starts to go bankrupt because of the markets. Everything's going into decline. Money's being withdrawn from the system. It's just a matter of time until, boom, somebody goes down. Like Lehman Brothers. It's going to be like Lehman Brothers. Don't know who it is yet. Could be anybody. Could be Deutsche Bank. You name a whole, There's a whole bunch of them out there right now who are just, they're not profitable. You know, uh, they're like growth stocks and things. Is there not they're, they're so many zombie companies out there and everything? And we're seeing a major switchover from from growth to value. I mean, you you got all of this out there happening right now in real time, and they're overlooking a some sort of a contraction, a major contraction. Equal, if not more powerful, than 2008. And the real estate market's primed for it. They, be, you, Do you believe they've been doing that again? They, they're they doing the subprime thing all over again. You know? And now all of a sudden, credit's drying up. <sighs> Interest rates are going up. Oh, my goodness. We're heading for it. We're heading for one hell of a big crash. And it's time at the same time that, that, that the people are going to be really upset because everything's coming at the same time uh, in the next few months. Uh, food prices are going to continue to rise, massively rise, and in some places they're not going to be able to get any food. What are they going to do about that? Okay, so let's take a look at oil. Food oil is $121.60. That's a massively high price for oil. And uh, we've seen this major rise in oil. If we go back uh, for one year here, we can see it. This major, just up, 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 up to the moon for oil. And, uh, of course, this is going to start shut things down. You know, this is going to lead, this is going to help lead toward this credit contraction. They're basically bleeding the system out. I mean, you know what's going to happen. If a man goes and he gets a severe cut, I mean a severe cut, somehow, I don't know how, but say it's in arteries and everything, and the blood's just pumping out of him, and he's walking down the street, you would say to him, hey, you better go get that fixed or you're going to lose too much blood. He says, no, I'm fine. He's going walking down the street, and the blood's dribbling out of him. You know? You know what's going to happen. I mean, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to know the guy's going to probably pass out in a minute or two from lack of blood. And that's the way with the system right now. I'm sitting here looking at this system, and the Fed is sitting there draining the blood out of the system at $95 billion a month. That's what they're going to be doing. And they're raising interest rates at the same time. And I'm just saying dead man walking about this system here. This financial system is dead man walking. It, it's it's going to drop, probably with a credit contraction. And then, don't worry, your inflation's gone then. But so is everything else. And if you don't pump money in, when you get a credit contraction like that, if you don't pump money into this system, it's over, baby. It's over. This system will contract all the way to the bottom. And if you don't do it, if the Fed doesn't do it, the system will, will continue until it's down like, a Dow, can you imagine a Dow Jones down by 80%, 90%? That's what would happen. And the system would just basically, all, everything, everybody goes bankrupt. Everybody. And if, the, if they don't print, even the government would go bankrupt. Even the U.S. Treasury would go bankrupt. What do you think that's all about every time they come around with that debt ceiling? They're basically telling you, if we don't raise the debt ceiling, we go bankrupt. So this is the same thing. If they don't print, if they get a credit contraction stuff, 
even the government will go bankrupt. Of course they're going to print. They're going to print. They'll print. They're not going to let it go that far. They're not going to let it go half that far. They're not going to let it go quarter that far. Here comes the money again, guys. So what happens then? Well, that's when that's when the that's when the whole that's when everything blows up because that's going to come at the expense of the dollar then, and then we're going to see then we're going to see the 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 major fight over what silver gold and silver people can get, and cryptos is going to just explode in price. All of these asset classes that are out of the dollar because the dollar when they finally find out when they finally becomes determined. That the dollar's the one that's going to take the hit. And it's absolutely no doubt. See, right now, there's big doubts. They're like, should I go into cash what the, what the, with what the Fed's doing? Maybe we're going to have a contraction. Maybe prices are going to drop. And it looks like they are. And so everybody out there is giving a thumbs up to staying in the dollar. What happens when it's proven, though? Proven that the dollar's going to go down the down the toilet hole. And that's a different story, a totally different story. Then they don't want they don't want these dollars. They all start to dump them. So this is the whiplash in the system I was talking about yesterday when I named my show Whiplash. The whiplash is in the financial system because we're moving in one direction right now toward deflation and and the, the central banks are all gung ho at fighting inflation and everything else and people are going into the dollar and the dollar strong and everything else and things like crypto gold and silver is weak and it's deleveraging it's on that side of the whiplash the whiplash is going to occur when they don't allow it to go the other way they don't allow this to go too far they're only going to allow this they are playing this game with a straight poker face and they're not giving their hand away what they're going to do. And I mean, I've told you guys, and you can play this. You can play this to your advantage. The simplest way, the easiest way, is to buy some gold, silver, and cryptocurrencies and put them away for yourself and sit on them. That's the easiest way to play this. It's the, it's the less fuss, no muss way. It's the easiest possible way to play this. And you'll make it really good, probably. And that's the easiest way to play this. Anyway, what we're looking at is crude oil is getting higher and higher in price. Uh, let's take a look at the move index, 105.29. Move index is starting to creep up a little bit again now, starting to move. Uh, let's take a look at bonds and rates. And we're looking at everything except for the 30-year. Uh, yields have climbed just a little bit. But we're looking at a U.S. 10-year at 3.04 and a U.S. 30-year at 3.17. And now let's check the dollar index at 102.90. Oh, and the dollar's climbing today. Yeah, buy into those dollars. Buy into those dollars every day. I mean, this is not something that's going to take forever. I know on my show some of the things seem to have taken forever. I mean, you're waiting and waiting and waiting years for it to happen. It has happened now. We've had most of the things I've talked about happen. But sometimes it takes a long time. This is not going to take a long time. This contraction that's coming is not going to is not that far out because the Fed's pushing really hard. And right now I think they started with 40 I think it was 45 billion a month quantitative tightening. And then they're going to up it to 95 billion very soon. By that time this summer comes. Going to, and so this is not going to take long. Uh, when they're draining ninety-five billion dollars a month out of the out of the out of the system, that that is a major leak of of the blood that runs the system. And this ain't going to take real long, and so you're going to see this reversal and everything. And once that reversal occurs, it's going to be a reversal for gold, silver, and cryptos. They're to the moon. Once it happens, because that means for sure the dollar's going down, going down hard. Unless, I mean, see, I can't say this with a hundred, a hundred, hundred percent certainty. I'm like 99.9% .9 sure that's the way it'll go. But you know, there's that one little nagging spot there where the Fed sits back and we have a credit contraction and they say, well, uh, you know, we're just going to, 
uh, not do anything. Uh, we're just going to let her go. Uh, let her leverage out. Of course, you know, the United States government would go bankrupt. Everybody would go bankrupt. The whole system would stop and uh, there would be a massive deleveraging and uh, all the money would disappear, go poof, if that happened. I'm serious. The only money that would actually exist is, is change in your pocket and the bills you have in your wallet. All the rest of the money would just go, God. All the credit-based money would just disappear in the system as it deleverages because the debt's so much bigger than, than the actual. And so cash, if that were to happen, I'm only giving it a... Uh, less than one in a thousand chance of happening that way. But if it were to happen, you know, uh, it would go back worse than it was in, 19, in the 1930s when you could have a man working all day long for 50 cents. Now it would be a man would work all day long for a penny if they did that. They did that. But nothing would hold together. What would happen is everything would freeze and lock up. And it would just, the system would just, that would be the end anyway. I mean, <laughs> if, if that were to happen. I mean, I'm just theorizing about it happening. It ain't going to happen. They can't possibly let that happen because they'd lose control over the system. It would deleverage, the stock market would deleverage by 99%. Uh, oil would be a penny a barrel. I mean, it just wouldn't be any money available if they let it all deleverage because the outstanding debt is so much larger than the credit available. You know, that's ridiculous to even talk about that happening. It won't happen. Anyway, catch you guys in the next show, and you guys have a great afternoon. And uh, and we'll, uh, don't don't forget, uh, you can still join the Patreon over there uh, for a buck a month, you know. And uh, I do about uh, probably between four and eight shows a month over there on the Patreon, you know. But they're, they're good shows because uh, they're exclusive to Patreon and I uh, talk about stuff I can't uh, talk about uh, on other uh, sites, you know, uh, like uh, I can talk more. I'm not talking about dirty stuff, you know, I'm I not talking about swearing or anything like that. I'm talking about more, talk about subject matter that that uh, that is more open that you can talk about, you know. Anyway. Thank you guys for listening. We'll catch you guys in the very next show. Bye-bye.